Palantir has a new biggest short seller, and it is none other than Jim Chanos, the infamous Tesla short seller. Back five or so years ago, anyone that was a Tesla investor, plagued by this hedge fund manager, Jim Chanos, and his horrible analysis of Tesla, leading him to lose what I imagine is billions of dollars, and it looks like he's going to do it again with Palantir. After watching this video, you'll have a good understanding of why the Palantir shorts are in trouble. I love burning the short sellers. Like, almost <laughs> nothing sure makes a human happier. So Jim Chanos just commenting on a recent shout-out of the Walgreens CEO just randomly mentioning Palantir in an interview and how critical and important its technology is to its revitalization of its business. Have a listen. So Ed, if you know me at all, you'll know that I won't use buzzwords if I can possibly avoid it, and I won't say things that don't have deep meaning. And as it relates to AI, there are some very, very interesting things we are doing in our business, both within our own four walls and working with others. We think there's some really interesting things that we can do there. I just uh, spoke with Alex Karp this week uh, from Palantir, who clearly uh, is doing some interesting things there. And uh, that's one of a number of folks that we're working with to actually, again, really get at meaningful things that we can do in the business leveraging AI. So Jim Chanos, of course, saying, aren't those the same guys that swallowed the Theranos story hook, line, and sinker? So clearly, he believes Palantir is straight up a fraud or very much close to one. Maybe he doesn't mean the product is, but the way that they are presenting it and rather the valuation and all of that is sort of how he's making his case around this being anywhere relating to having Palantir in the same sentence as Theranos. So let's dig a little deeper. From past posts of his, he says, the guy who founded a company that sells software to big governments so they can monitor its citizens rails against big governments without irony. So clearly he has something against Alex Karp here. And then he said in the last 12 months, short sellers have bought 60 million shares of Palantir while insiders have been selling, including one of the founders who filed a 7 million share sale yesterday. So we're gonna get into the specifics with what ch what's happening in short interest, but clearly you're seeing the narrative start to develop. Let's look at a few more. This is back in 2021. Nice to see the Palantir CEO admit and defend that share brace comp is indeed an expense. That's not, of course, how they present their financial results. They add back SBC to adjusted results. So clearly he's taking aim at the financials of the company. This is back when they were unprofitable. And of course, it was more of a concern. Let's see what else he said in 2022. If you're interested in the PLTR SPAC round tripping allegations, you should review pointing out his concerns with how they handled that and saying short sellers have been an have been net buyers of Palantir over the past year. That's what we just looked at. Shorts have not been an issue for PLTR, but then goes on to say Apple at a $23 billion market cap in 2004 was trading at less than three times 2004 revenues of $8 billion. Now Palantir is trading at 22 times revenues and two thirds of Palantir's free cash flow margin is from issuing stock share based compensation. So you're seeing the narrative to start to develop. Clearly, he has uh, you know something against Alex Karp. Maybe seeing a successful, unconventional CEO reflects poorly on his own on his own abilities as someone. <laughs> Trying to analyze businesses, clearly missed Palantir in the past, could have bought it below $10, and now it's trading for north of 20 But past that, he certainly has some problems with the valuation, talking about revenue multiples, so he's clearly not a believer in the future because high multiples are usually worth paying when you have a growth story that's going to take hold. And some of the time, if you've done enough work, you're able to see how a multiple like 22 times can actually look cheap. So let's have a look here at what's actually happening with the short interest, because Jim Chanos is saying, oh, shorts aren't a problem for Palantir. Oh, they've been net buyers. And it looks like that has been the case. I can explain what this means. Right now, we just had the data published from March 15th, which is the latest reading of short interest, which says the float of Palantir that is held short is 5%. So 5% of shares in the float are shorted against Palantir. Coverage ratio is one day. So that is pretty short. It would only take one day for Palantir shorts to cover if they spent the entire day doing so based on the volume. So it's been much higher in the past days to cover as you can see shown in blue and the historical short interest shares shown in green. 
So if we just look at days to cover, this is partly impacted by the increased volume for Palantir, but it's really never been lower, except if you count late 2020 and early 2021, but that, I wouldn't really count that because of how I would say that was more of when the company was just getting listed and there wasn't really a reason to short it right off the listing. So for all intents and purposes, this is the lowest short days to cover we have ever seen in the company's history now why is this important well of course we know s p 500 inclusion is still pending i think in shorts do not want to step in the way of that but i would not at all be surprised to see short interest really climb back up again i am sure i am very confident that the shorts are going to continue pushing back against palantir and i think 2024 really is the last time for them to do so given that i think 2025 is going to see an explosion in the financials that will not be seen in 2024 so my opinion is that the second half of 2024 is going to be the palantir shorts last chance to really get the stock somewhere that could shake a lot of retail investors confidence and what would that be to me well i think if they're somehow able to break a 20 break the recent $20 floor, I think that could trigger some panic selling from investors that have only gotten in more recently. So if I were a Palantir short seller, I would not be giving up just yet because think of it, AIP is reflected in the multiple, but it's not reflected in the financials. And so when we see Jim Chano saying Palantir is trading at 22 times revenues. That is completely unjustified unless they're able to pull the story together over the next two years. So I think the shorts have a case to be made. If there's any bad news from Palantir over the course of the rest of the year, I think they could make something happen to the downside. My target for 2024 year end maintains between $20 and $30. Take the average of that 25. I've been very consistent on this. But once again, if I was a short seller, I would be doing everything I could to tarnish this company and I wouldn't be giving up just yet. So this is a warning to everyone watching this video. I would not be surprised to see lots of tricks from Palantir short sellers, lots of negative coverage. Because once AIP is in the financials, there's really going to be no going back. Now, of course, you never know if it's going to take Palantir a while to grow into that 22 times sales multiple. But when you see Palantir, once again, getting compared to Theranos, it's really, it's really a sign that the shorts are not giving up. They, they hate this company. They hate what it stands for. They hate the mission in some cases. They hate the CEO. They hate the employees. They hate everyone working towards making this company successful. And most of all, I think they hate the investor base and the community and how strong and successful and knowledgeable uh, I would say that we all are. Then taking the lines of cocaine and uh, <laughs> away from these short sellers who like are going short on a truly great American company, not just ours, but it just love pulling down great American companies so that they can pay for their coke. And uh, the best thing that could happen to them is we will provide, we will lead their coke dealers to their homes after they can't pay their bills. <laughs> and that that's like one of my. Surely all short sellers. Yeah, well, you know, go ahead, habits. do your thing. We'll do our thing.